Hello YouTube, this is Chris, Eldritch Pipes, and this is going to be my video on uh, introduction to pipe smoking, uh, specifically uh, picking a first pipe and uh, what tobaccos you might want to try. Okie dokie, so first pipe, what are you looking for? I would say I don't know what other people are going to think about this, but I would say choose a briar pipe first. If you, you're not going to want to spend much on your first pipe because you're still going to be figuring out are you going to like this thing. But don't buy a cob. <laughs> um, I have nothing against cobs. I have several myself. Uh, but these are like the old clay pipes. They're designed to be smoked and thrown away. They're inexpensive, they're light, but I would suggest they don't represent the heart of the hobby. So buy a briar pipe. M made well, um, they will last you a long time. And they can be relatively inexpensive. Uh, you could be you could go for a Peterson. Uh, you could even, if you're lucky enough to have a a, a local brick and mortar tobacconist, um, they will quite often sell what they call basket pipes, quite literally in a basket, quite often, and they will be seconds usually from a factory. They'll have some defect or other, usually not critical but and they will be generally quite affordable um, the only thing to consider there is quite often the pipes will be in a basket in the window and if they have got ebonite stems which many do uh, they will have oxidized quite a lot, so they will taste horrid. Um, let's talk about stems. So, most pipes will have uh, either a vulcanite, ebonite is another name for it, it's all uh, vulcanized rubber, or a acrylic stem. For your first pipe, you probably want an acrylic stem, because there's no maintenance involved. And if the pipe has been sitting in the window, it doesn't matter. If it's got an ebonite stem, it will require maintenance. A lot of people like it because it's soft on the teeth, but it requires maintenance because it oxidizes over time. That is the, the sulfur that is in the rubber to make it hard, um, precipitates out, and then you taste the sulfur. You can usually see it because um, unoxidized ebonite is black oxidation. You, you can see the sulfur, it's gone yellow or green. And uh, you would either need to clean it up or just stay clear of it. So, for a cheap option then, basket pipe, ideally with an acrylic stem. And one thing to consider, <coughs> some pipes, take, not all, but some take a 9mm filter. This has uh, got uh, charcoal inside and it's quite good for, um, well, enjoying some tobaccos that are stronger because some pipe tobacco can be rather strong. But with a filter in, it sort of can uh, balance that out. The other thing, two other things, I would suggest a straight pipe, first of all, rather than a bent pipe, because the straight pipe will always be drilled pretty much correctly. Um, it's much harder to get, get a straight pipe wrong. Um, we've all done this kind of thing. Oom Paul or Extreme Bent, 
Um, this is a Peterson and is renowned for smoking poorly. There's always a bent pipe like this has utility. It just hangs from the mouth. But it smokes wet, it smokes hot. It, um, it's not a great way to start. So, go with a straight pipe, I suggest. And also, one with not too large a tobacco chamber. That's why a prince shape is a really good way to go. It's shallow. Um, on this pipe, it's um, uh, quite a small chamber anyway. Rather than an Oom Paul, large chamber, very deep. Um, it's going to take a lot of tobacco and, um, you know, will overwhelm a, a new smoker quite quickly. Either that or you'll just be throwing a lot of tobacco away at the end. So, um, yeah, so that's my advice. A briar pipe, acrylic stem, ideally. Um, a straight one with a, with not too large a tobacco chain. Be a great way to start. <coughs> okay, so you've picked a pipe. What are you going to put in it? Uh, okay, so I've made a few selections of tobacco. In pipe tobacco, like nowhere else, there is there's quite a few categories. Um, you you've probably heard of. English ears and aromatics, but it kind of goes well beyond that. So, even now I'm not going to be covering all of them. But what I think are the main styles, each style being distinct to me. Maybe some people would disagree, but these are the main ones I think. You know, if you haven't tried one of them, you might be missing out on a style that you might really love. Um, the only one I don't do is a straight Virginia, um, because I haven't come across a straight Virginia blend that I like. But nearly a straight Virginia, McBaron's Navy Flake. Now, this is a straight Virginia but it has a, a rum topping that just gives it a little something. Uh, it's m much more interesting than just a straight Virginia. So I would say this is a really good place to start. It's quite mellow. Yeah, it's user-friendly. <laughs> so McBaron's Navy Flake, good place to start for Virginia blend. Who next? All right. So uh, there is a category called Vapors, which is a Virginia and Perique blend. I won't go into describing Perique. You can look up Perique if you're interested. But my favourite one is Dunhill's Dark Flake. Um, Again, this is quite a mellow flake. Uh, the flavours in it are just great and um, just smokes really easily. Um, you'll notice that I do tend towards the flake tobacco as a cut um, because it, it works for me. I smoke quite fast, I think, and um, smoking flakes means sort of counters that because the flakes burn slow. Slower than a ribbon and certainly sort of slower than a shag cut. So, Dunhill Dark Flake for a vapour. Okay, then English slash Balkan blend. Again, I'm not going to get into it, but Samuel Gareth's Balkan Flake is a really nice place to start. It's not, some, some blends claim to have Latakia in and don't really have that much. It's pointless. 
it's pointless starting there. Start with a blend. If you're going to try an English Balkan, have one that has a good dose of Latakia in it. Otherwise, why bother, I say. Good place to start with those. Now, actually, I the one, the Latakia blend I smoke most at the moment is HH Latakia Flake. But I just... I didn't bother to do my research on this one. I don't know if it technically counts as an English. Um, but again, I'm not going to go into that. But the Balkan plate certainly does. All right. Now, this isn't often talked about as a category, but I, I think it really is. Um, Dark fired leaf. Well, this is this blend is old dark fired. The Baron's HH old dark fired, and um, even I only discovered my love of dark fired leaf relatively recently. And um, you don't hear people talking about it like a category, um, but it is distinctly different. I would say. The flavour profile is totally different to anything else. Um, so uh, blends that focus on that component, I would say, I would definitely say it's its own thing. And, uh, and amazing as well. The dark fire is not too strong. Uh, there is bold Kentucky, but that is, that is super strong. Although sometimes when I'm in the mood, a little bold Kentucky in with the dark fired is really nice. Okay. Virginia Burley. Again, you don't quite well. There are there are a small bunch, the the Burley lovers, I think. But anyway, I don't think that there is a blend of Virginia Burley that tops this. Not that I've come across yet. And I was just smoking um, Solani's H30 Flake, but still. Jermaine's Rich Dark Flake is pretty much the greatest, <laughs> I would say. I, um, I haven't come across one that I thought beats that. So, um, which dark flake? I mean, you should try it anyway, but it will still continue your tour of pipe tobacco country. So, the only style I'm not really doing is um, aromatic, like vanilla, cherry, maple syrup, that kind of thing. Um, there's so many to choose from, so many to choose from, that it's just a world to get lost in. And you'll know if that's something that appeals to you or not. Um, I've had the odd uh, one. I don't mind McBaron Cube, which is a kind of a strange vanilla -y toffee thing, but it's pleasant. But it's not a style that I really go for. But, okay, so this is going to be a Lakeland, uh, which is, it is an aromatic, but it is a very particular style um, that, like no other aromatic that you'll ever come across. Um, the Lakelands have a, I don't know if you'd call it an English aromatic. That might be confusing if you're thinking of English blends having Latakia. It's a different thing. Um, it was to do with how you could flavour things during our purity laws. Um, anyway, St Bruno, I would suggest, is the best way to start investigating the Lakeland style. With the big irony being 
that St. Bruno isn't a Lakeland. <laughs> Again, this one's made by McBaron, like so many that I smoke at the moment. Uh, but the topping, the, the flavouring style is exactly like the Lakeland Essence. Um, so um, it's a really good representation of what a uh, Lakeland style blend would would be um, without having to struggle to try and find, depending on where you are in the world, you can almost always find some Bruno, I think. Whereas finding, say, Ennerdale, for some people that might be tricky. But, so there you go. Some Bruno, if you find that you like that, then try and hunt down some Ennerdale. I'm not saying that they're the same, I'm just saying um, that if you like some Bruno, you probably will like a couple of Lakeland blends. If you don't like some Bruno, you will hate the Lakeland style. So there we go. Pipes. First pipes, first tobaccos. Now, go do it. I will be doing next a review of Solani's Aged Birdie Flake, which is why I was smoking it earlier. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you soon, and sweet smokes. Ta-da! <laughs>